Hi everyone, I'm Vincent from Not Bad, and I appreciate you coming by my channel today. I know you're here for the free video tutorial on how to make this chunky ghost. I used blanket yarn for this pattern, so a bit bigger than my normal work, but I really enjoyed playing around with it. Everything I found was from Joanne, so you'll find all the materials in the next section of the video. I hope you enjoy the pattern. It's easy, free, and very beginner friendly. Um, if anyone wants to pick up on me, Groomy, this is a great video to um, gear them towards. I can't wait to see all the tags on social media. Make sure to use the hashtag YarnPunk and tag NotBad so I can see and reshare your work. You can also be sure to find all the timestamps below. That way you can hop in and out of the pattern depending on where you need to be. You can learn a few new skills such as the magic ring, and I hope it turns out well for you. And here's the ghost we'll be making today. You can find the full written and photo tutorial on my blog by clicking the link down below. And this pattern is worked in US terms. Be sure to like this video and click subscribe for more Amigurumi tutorials. The materials we'll need today are an 8mm crochet hook. Sorry you can't see the size there because of the blur, but we'll be using 8mm. We'll need a darning needle to sew in our tails and attach our project together. We'll need a pair of scissors to cut our yarn. I'm using a pair of Tabitha sewer scissors. And of course, we need safety eyes. Uh, we'll be using a size 15 millimeter for ours. We'll also be using polyfill to stuff our project. And for the yarn, we'll be using Yarnspiration's Bernat Baby Blanket yarn. Super soft, and I fell in love with it quickly. You can find all the materials down below in the description. When making this ghost, you can use any project that has blanket yarn or a size 6 super bulky yarn. As you can see, this is a size 6 super bulky yarn, so you can get a similar outcome with other yarns. We're going to begin with the magic ring technique or the magic circle. Keep your tail in front of your fingers facing forward. With your working yarn, you're going to wrap around the index finger. Insert your hook underneath the first loop and grab the second loop and pull underneath with the working yarn. You're now going to chain by yarning over and pull through. So you've now made your magic ring. You can pull out the tail so it's no longer in the way. So now that you have your ring or circle, we're going to treat it as a normal stitch and we're going to do six single crochet into this ring. So to begin, we're going to insert our hook yarn over and pull through with our two loops we're now going to yarn over and pull through both so as you see we now have our first single crochet so we're going to do five more so yarn over and pull through with our two loops pull through again so that's two so we're going to do three more in this magic ring and we do want a total of six single crochet so we'll keep doing this together. So I have, I have two more to do. So one, and then one last single crochet into the loop. And there we go. So as we see, it's still kind of a crescent shape. So with the tail, just cinch tight, and it becomes a small circle. And that's where the quote unquote magic comes from. So to make sure we don't lose our place, we're going to use a stitch marker. I'm just going to be using a leftover tail so it's easily identifiable, but you can use whatever you need to. So we have six single crochet. I like to, to make sure that we have six, so counting backwards. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to single crochet into that very first stitch, yarn over and pull through both of those loops that is our stitch yarn over and pull through. So we've done our first single crochet, but we're going to do two in this stitch. So insert our hook in the same stitch and single crochet. And this is called an increase. So we're going to put two single crochet into each stitch around the entire magic circle. So doing an increase into each stitch. So one single crochet and a second crochet into the same stitch. And we're going to be doing this same technique all the way around. And we are going to be doubling our stitches. 
So we're going to go from six stitches up to a total of 12 stitches. So once again, we're just single crocheting twice into each stitch around. And when we get to our last stitch, we can pull out our stitch marker and we'll do our increase into that final stitch. And there we go. So we should have all 12 single crochets. I like to count backwards just to make sure I'm on the right path. So now that I've confirmed I have 12, I can now add my next stitch marker so I know where I started off. And now for this round, we're going to single crochet into the first stitch, just like before, pull through, and then we're going to go to the next stitch and single crochet again. And then we're going to single crochet into the same stitch once again and doing an increase. So we're going to continue that repetition all the way around. So single crochet in the next stitch and then increase into follow. So increasing into the following stitch. So once again, we're going to single crochet in the first stitch and in the second stitch, we're going to increase. And you'll see this on the pattern as a single crochet, comma, increase. And that is what this will be looking like for you this entire way around. So continue doing a sequence of a one, two, one, two. And a good rule of thumb is that you will be ending the round with an increase in the same stitch as the stitch marker is in. So we're going to continue just doing a single crochet followed by increase. So single crochet for our last one, pull out our stitch marker and we're going to increase into that same stitch. So two single crochet in the same stitch. All right, great. And now after you finish your round, you can check your pattern and in parentheses, it should have 18 stitches so we can count our work. Make sure we have all 18 stitches before we start uh, moving forward. Now that we have our stitch marker in place, we can do the next round written down. You'll see it's a single crochet to increase. So in our first stitch, we're going to single crochet. In our second stitch, we're going to single crochet once again. And in the following stitch, we're going to do an increase. So it's two single crochets followed by an increase. So let's do that again. We'll single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the following. So it's been two single crochet and then increase into the next. So two single crochet in the same stitch. And just like before, we're going to follow this repetition all the way around our circle and we'll be ending the round with an increase in the final stitch where the stitch marker is located. When doing this, you are adding six stitches to each of your rounds. So we will be going from six to 12 to 18 and this will be 24. And I'll speed up the video. So we'll continue doing this repetition all the way to the end and we'll start back up when you get to the last stitch. So now that we're at the end of the round, we'll do our last increase into the final stitch, insert our stitch marker, and we have only one more round of increasing. So getting past all the counting, And for our final round of increase, it'll look similar, but we're doing three single crochet. So single crochet in the first, single crochet in the second, single crochet in the third. So three single crochets, and then an increase after the third single crochet. So two single crochet in the same stitch for our increase. And we're gonna do that again. So single crochet one, single crochet two, and single crochet three. 
and we're following with an increase of two single crochet. So we'll continue this entire repetition all the way around into the last stitch with our stitch marker. I'll see you when we finish. Now that we've finished that round, this one's gonna be super easy, literally just single crochet all the way around. So no more counting. We'll be able to just single crochet into each stitch all the way around until our stitch marker. Continue single crocheting all the way around and I'll meet you at the end. With that round of single crochet finished, we now get to just continue single crocheting without any counting. This is my favorite part of the pattern myself. So for the next seven rounds, round six through 12, just continue single crocheting all the way around. And it's a great time to pick up an audiobook, watch a movie, TV show, music, all those things. Let me know down below in the comments what you decided to do and I'll see you at the end of round 12. So as you can tell, our project has becoming more ghost shaped. So this time for this round, we're going to be working on those uh, bottom ruffles to kind of give it that uh, ghostly look, kind of like it's a floating, flying. I actually don't know what the bottom of the ghost is supposed to be called, but we're gonna work on those on this round. So what we'll do at the beginning of our round we are going to be doing a first half double crochet and only into the front loop only. So yarn over and insert your hook through just the front loop. Notice how there's a back loop as well. We're going to skip that and we're going to do a half double crochet through the front loop. So yarn over and pull through. You're left with three loops and pull through all three. And now we're going to do another half double crochet through the same exact stitch we just did the first one. So yarning over and pulling through all three. So again, we're gonna yarn over, pull our hook through, yarn over and pull through all loops. And we're gonna do this one more time. So for a total of four half double crochets. We're now going to skip the next stitch and we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch where there's a front loop only. So we'll skip and then insert our hook through the front loop only, yarn over and pull through both loops. And from here, we're going to skip another stitch and we're going to do the same thing we did before and half double crochet into the front loop only. Once you do your first, we need to do three more into the same exact stitch and we'll end up with four double half double crochets through the same stitch. Once you have that, we're going to slip stitch again after skipping a stitch. So skip a stitch, slip stitch into the front loop only and you're finished with that part, skip another stitch, and then four half double crochet into the same stitch. And we're going to continue this repetition all the way around following the pattern you see on the screen. I will see you at the end. When you reach the end of the round, you're going to do a slip stitch into the front loop only of the same stitch that you had your stitch marker into. We're going to now cut our yarn and pull through to finish off. And now we'll have our ghostly shape, the ruffles on the bottom. 
and it's already looking so cute so far. With that tail that's connected to the ghost from the magic ring initially, you can cut that and we'll be adding in our safety eyes. So we'll be using 15 millimeter safety eyes. You have the eyes and the washers on the back to hold them in place. And you'll want to make sure you grab those. You can find the link in the description where I got mine. So we'll now be identifying which round we want our safety eyes to be inserted into. And on the pattern, it calls for round nine. So starting from the very center of that magic ring, I like to count down nine different rounds. So starting the magic ring circle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can now insert our safety eyes into round nine. So looking for the best place to do that. So insert the safety eye. And now we're going to count five stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and a safety eye following. So we'll now have both safety eyes in place and we'll recount the amount of stitches between the safety eyes. One, two, three, four, five. So perfect five stitches in between with the washers. We're going to clip into place the safety eyes from the middle of the body or inside, I should say. So push those on. I like to only go up one of the little notches. Even that's kind of pushing it in, but I really do think that's all it needs to go. And so now we're fully done with the main body and we can work on the rest of the project. So you will need the base of the pattern. However, it's made the exact same as the beginning of the ghost body. So with the timestamps, you can see here, just head over to that part of the video to redo it and finish off and come back to this side. But it's important that you leave a long, generous amount of length for the tail when cutting. Thank you for your patience on that part. Now that you have this bottom portion with a long, generous amount of tail length, we're going to be using our tool, the darning needle, to push the tail through the darning needle so we can be using it. So now that that's attached, we can now sew into the back loops of our main body. So these loops are left when you're working the front loop. So insert your needle up through the first loop. It's good to do this kind of where uh, the beginning and end of our rounds were. With our darn needle, we'll go into the next loop, going sewing through the next stitch, and you pull through all the way. Now that you have that secure, I'd pull tightly. Insert your needle through the next stitch up into the next loop. Pull through just like before. Pretty snug. And we'll continue the same repetition all the way around. So once again, taking our darning needle and go into that next loop and through the next stitch on the bottom half. And as you can see, it's starting to uh, be secure. That's definitely not coming off. It should be flopping. And continue doing this same repetition halfway through and stop at the halfway point. Now that we're at this step, we can now start stuffing our body with polyfill. So using polyfill, we want to start stuffing until it's pretty firm. You don't want to use two huge a chunks all at once. You do want to be using smaller and lighter pieces. It definitely takes a bit more time, but you will get a better stuffing that isn't so lumpy. So give that a try. Going slow definitely helps the consistency. I hope you take your time with this. It's always worth it to have a nice, clean, stuffed animal. Once we have it stuffed firmly, we can continue doing our repetition of sewing the bottom portion to the main body, going through the front and the back loops of our two pieces. So continue doing this all the way till the end. If you notice that there are some more room to keep stuffing, feel free to do that as you continue along this process. And once you make it to the end, 
you can use your darning needle, push through the body, so you're coming out the back, as you see here, pull the yarn, and then we're going to knot off, so in the stitch next to it, insert your darning needle, pull through underneath the existing stitch, pull until you have a loop, and then pull your yarn through that loop, and pull it slowly but tightly, make sure it's not overlapping, go back into the stitch, pull through, and now they have it there, you can go and cut, and with the back of your darning needle, you can just push it into the body. Now we're still left with the long tail of the uh, main body with the ruffles. So taking that tail, we're going to use our darning needle to go through that same stitch that it's connected to. Pull through so you're on the bottom side. You're going to weave in through the other stitches, through the loops. Just like you see here, pull, and we'll weave back in just for some extra security to knot off. So again, you have like your loop, you're going to pull, sorry for uh, messing that little part up. So you will just pull through the same loop, pull through so it's secure, pull tightly, and then now with our darning needle we can weave in through the under loops that are found where it's kind of sewn together pull through it can really be pulled through anywhere and now that we've done enough knotting off we can cut and push back into our piece pull that off and there we go we have the main body it should be feeling pretty firm for yourself now we'll be adding on the arms to our ghosts so finding the eye we're going to count our stitches to four one, two, three, four. And that fourth stitch, we're gonna bring our hook underneath the stitch. And we're gonna use our working yarn. We're gonna pull through. We're going to chain three. So yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through three. And now we're going to insert our hook into the same exact stitch that we pulled through initially. Pull through, and we're going to pull through the next loop doing a slip stitch. And there we have it, we're done with that. So we're going to cut our yarn and pull through. And now you have a little arm. So to get rid of both these tails, we're going to attach with our darning needle. We'll insert the tail through the same stitch that the arm was pulled through. So insert your needle, pull through and pull it taut. You can kind of play around with the arm. Do the same thing with the other tail, insert through the same stitch, and then pull out of the body anywhere behind. And to make sure our arm is in the right place, we can count our stitches and there should be three between the eye. So one, two, three. And so we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side of the ghost as well. Make sure to count your stitches up to four. So one, two, three, four. And that is the stitch you'll throw your hook into or insert it through. Pull the yarn, pull it through, yarn over and chain one chain two and chain three, and then slip stitch into the same exact stitch as we did before. We're gonna do the exact same thing and pull, pull all our tails through and finish off. With your tails pointing out, we can knot off and weave in through our stitches to secure. And once we secure, we can take our scissors and cut. And now use the back end of your darning needle to push it back into the body and to hide it. Time to add on the face. To embroider the face, we're going to use black blanket yarn attached to our darning needle 
and we're going to start from any point in the ghost. I'm just starting at the top left. You can start from the back and we're going to insert our hook into the top left corner stitch of the left eye. We're going to try to find a space right in that stitch by the eye pulling through so it's kind of at an angle and we're going to insert our needle right back through the same stitch that's touching the eyeball. And you're going to pull slowly and there you have it. So there's the first pair of eyelashes. You can push up the yarn a little bit so it kind of pops back up. You can kind of give it a little bit more slack if need be. Cut your tails and you can push those in with the back of a darning needle. We're going to do the exact same thing but from the right side inserting our needle through our ghost to the side of the safety eye. I started from the bottom and now I'm going to insert my needle into the stitch that's still touching the eye pull through and with my darn needle I'm going to go back to the same exact stitch and I'm going to pop my needle out on the other side of the ghost so it's a little bit hidden so up top and once again you can kind of push the yarn out give it some slack give it a little bit more life and there you have it you have your second pair of eyelashes The last thing we're going to embroider is the smile. So insert our needle back into the ghost like we've done before, pulling it out into round 10, the round after round 9 where the safety eyes are in place. And we'll go into the center stitch. Now pull your yarn through and you're going to go up one round, two stitches to the right, insert our needle, pull and then we're going to go right back down through the center and it's good to kind of go on the other side of it so you can kind of make a more clear smile if you saw what I did right there. We're going to pull and you want it to be snug. And to know you did this correctly you should have three stitches in between the two ends of the smile. The last thing to do now is weaving your ends and pushing your tails.